Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about ORMs. So let's get into it. So basically what we're going to cover is, well it's practically, it's basically just a request. But in essence what we're going to talk about, what is an ORM? And can we live without one? And how do we structure our code to make it testable if we do decide to actually go without one? It doesn't have to be without one. It can probably work this way. I would say it will probably work this way regardless of how you do it, depending on your testing strategy. But let's drive right in. So the question was, would you like to go over how to design a simple REST API if functional programming, object-oriented programming, programming, doesn't matter without using Mongo's or an ORM. Just raw SQL queries. And how do you design a service? How would you test it? So I've created a little demo project here that should illustrate how I would go about this in essence. But the th first thing I want to tell you about ORMs, guys, is just that an ORM which stands for Object Relational Mapping, is just a tool that allows you to take a query to a database, a very common query usually, and convert it into the data structure that you want without any work on your part. Now, most of you who are working with Node will probably know about Mongoose, which is probably the most popular ORM. Well, it's not a pure ORM, but it is an ORM. It's just a library that allows you to make connecting to the MongoDB database simple and it allows you to add validation and other sorts of nice features on top of your data models. But you don't actually have to use Mongoose. For those of you who have looked into it, Mongoose isn't actually the MongoDB client, which is the library that is handed to us by Mongo, the crew at MongoDB to actually, co actually connect to their database. That client is just a small thin it's a thin wrapper on top of a tcp connection which is just going to connect to the daemon that is running on the system that you're connecting to so hopefully i can kind of illustrate this so if we just let's start by looking at the package json file here so you'll notice here now that in my dev dependencies i have a bunch of stuff and in my dependencies i have a bunch of other stuff but notice something i don't have mongoose because that's the whole point of this to kind of showcase to you how you would go about doing all of this without mongoose or any this is not just mongoose specific guys this is the, it's the same thing for any database or it doesn't matter if you're in java c sharp whatever it's the same principle so all I'm actually depending on is MongoDB, which this is their official client, or it's the client library that they give us who use uh, Node. So I have this tiny little server here that is just going to spin up my application, and then my application is in here. All it has is a, it's just a function, which is going to, you probably should recognize this, it's going to create an express app and it's going to just accept JSON. And then I have this function here that says use router, don't worry, we're going to talk about all of this stuff in just a moment. And then I have something called a user router that bootstraps everything up. And here is my user router, which is another function that takes in some stuff, don't care about that right now. It creates a router and then it has two endpoints. It has a get endpoint where we can just connect and get all the users or we're going to return a 500 if we don't actually find any users uh, or if there's something wrong with the connection or the query and then we can create a user. These are basically the only two operations that we have. So let's dive into this a little bit more deeply. So if we go all the way back up to the server you'll notice that as you probably have noticed in a lot of other videos where I use Mongo's, we don't actually have Mongo's here. We only have this thing here called a connect function. And this is just referencing a library that, I, well, it's basically just something that I made. It's this in this file here. So all that's going on here is that I'm depending on the MongoDB client. And once again, this is just another layer on top of a raw TCP connection. This is just something that the guys and girls at MongoDB and who maintain that project has provided us so that we can actually connect to uh, to their system without having to implement their entire protocol for the, for ourselves. They use a custom protocol, I think, which is called like the wire protocol, but don't quote me on that. 
which is just a TCP connection that where you get send and fetch data. That's it. And I could make this. I and if I wanted to, I could create a mon ten tons of these different clients. I could make it for every language I want, and many people do. It's just that this is more convenient for me because they've already done the work for me. But at the same time, it's not as high level as Mongoose because Mongoose adds a lot of other stuff on top. That well, the whole purpose of this video is to showcase that this doesn't actually. It, you don't have to use this if you don't want to. So apart from that I have a default database name and here I just instantiate my client and then I export this uninstantiated database reference which is going to represent the reference that I have to the connection to the database and then I have this connect function which is an async function and then all I'm going to do is that I'm going to connect to the client and then I'm going to instantiate the database or well, a instance of the database. In this case, it's just hard coded to my project, but I can override it if I wanted to. And so you probably notice now that there is a slight problem here, which is the fact that when I connect to the external database, this is an async operation, which is an issue because all the references that I want to the database instance like this, unless I want to pass this around all the way from the top like this, to every single place and everything because then everything has to become a function basically I have to make an assumption and here I'm making a very naive assumption but it's a very similar assumption to what you would expect from Mongoose if you've tried to use Mongoose you have a very similar concept you just connect at the start of your application and then you cross your fingers well it's not that hard that that bad usually but you cross your fingers and hope that the connection works before you actually make any request and this is usually how it goes before you can establish the connection to the external database you kind of have to hope that nothing happens in your system I mean you could be really careful and make sure and put some checks to so that your server doesn't actually get any requests that can't take any requests until the database is up but we're gonna be a bit naive in this video just to keep things simple so then I have as we see here this make app function which is found in here and the reason why I have created this Mac make app function is so that I can pass in a, a what I call a user module and a user module is a special little thing it's really only this interface so this interface contains two things it create it contains a user DAO or user database access object and a user service and we're going to touch on what exactly what that means in a moment but as you can see here I'm just instantiating these two things here and then I'm exporting them as a module so that I can get all these things that are specific to a user exposed in a nice clean fashion and so as an input now I can just depend on this module and then in my module I have another function that is called make user router that takes in the dependencies that I've just passed in through my module and in the user router as we saw earlier all that's really taking in is the servers and the user DAO now what is the difference between a user service and a user DAO well let's talk about that for a moment so traditionally when you work with a so-called layered architecture which is which is, is what this is it's a layered architecture you can go and look that up exactly what that means but in essence the idea is that you have layers to an application and this is the most common strategy for building an application in general so you start at the database layer the lowest level which is the connection between well you can argue that there's even a lower level than that but the lowest level between the request and the end results that we are looking for is this file here this is the lowest level right down here because this is the thing that is going to happen last before we actually hit the database but in between there I have something called a user DAO which is a very common pattern as well where you just have a class or some abstraction on top of the raw connection that you have to the database that abstracts away the need for you to write all these um, different queries by yourself so you can simply create this tiny little wrapper that just makes it easier for you to work with very common queries and this is exactly what I've done here so my user DAO is just a it's just a class on top of the, the, the database 
or the, the DB reference I have here. So what I'm saying here is that when I want to save a user, I just say db.collection and then I expect to get back a user with the collection name like so, and then I do insert one. And then I wrap that in this little function that just says, hey, save user. So I don't actually have to know about all of this underlying mechanics of how to connect to the database. I can just create a nice function that makes it very clean for me. And that makes it much easier at the higher level in the application when I have other code that is going to depend on this. So I don't have to write out all this duplicate logic over and logic over and over. This is very useful because when we are going on our own and we're not really using an ORM that usually is very well tested with different types of queries like this, for example, well, then we need, as the implementers of this of these queries, to be sure that this actually works. And we're going to look at the tests that are associated with this. Now, if you use Mongoose, you don't test Mongoose because you trust that the implementers have already implemented all of these different queries in the correct fashion. But since we're doing it ourselves, we need to do that. And then we have a get user function and a get all users function. And all of this is doing is that it's just abstracting away the connections and the queries that I need to write in order to do what I want with the Mongo um, and Mongo database. So with that covered, let's go and have a look again at the user router. So you'll notice here that I pass in the user DAO and the user service, both of them. And I'm only doing that because this is a demo example. I just wanted to show you the do's and the don'ts of this idea of a layered architecture. And we hopefully all of this will come together for you when we look at the tests. So the user DAO, this thing is ideally something that I would never use directly like this. The goal is to wrap the user DAO within a service or something like that, which is in the this user service. So I can, and there are a lot of people who do this, like they create a user DAO and then they just have this um, this direct reference to to the queries and you, you can do this there's nothing necessarily wrong with it but the reason why you don't want to do this is because ideally the user DAO should represent the it, it should just be a very thin abstraction on top of connecting to the database so ideally you don't want that logic to sip into your network layer or your application layer which is this layer here the business logic layer is is usually where you want to include include that, which is just in this case the user service. This is the, our business business logic layer because the user service is going to contain all the business logic that is associated with our application. So this is a bit of an anti anti pattern. You don't really want to do this. You want to abstract away the fact that you have a user DAO to do this and then actually add that into a user service. So if we go to the user service, we'll notice something, and that is that this is practically the exact same thing as using the user DAO. So as you can see here, all it's, it has the same CRUD methods here as the user DAO. It's just that instead of looking, at, instead of using the database reference and doing raw queries, so like the, the queries at all, we just trust that, oh, this get user function knows how to get a user. We get the user and then we return the username in this instance. And then we have one for get user, get all users, and save users, or save the user. So why are we going through this extra work? Because as you can see, just using the user DAO like this directly could have been just as fine. Because it's basically we're really only in this scenario creating one function that calls the function of the user DAO and it doesn't do anything. And that is true. But the reason why this is, is because this demo application is very simple. In a large-scale system, in the user service would contain much more sophisticated methods that would do much more sophisticated things. I created a very trivial little example here. This is business logic. So let's say for the sake of argument that up here in our user router, I wanted to return not the user, but the user name. So if I were to use the user directly like this, then I would have to actually 
grab the user and then return the username. And that is business logic. And ideally you want to abstract that into just a method that takes care of that business logic because it keeps everything much cleaner. Because if you've been doing any node development or you've seen other people do node development, you'll notice that it's very easy to very quickly get to a very bloated um, action handler or request handler. You can have like I've seen it so many times, you have tons and tons and tons of logic at the network layer that you really don't want to be there because the more stuff you have at this level, the harder it becomes to test and the more unwieldy the code is going to get. And that's why we create this business application layer or a service layer that just abstracts away that so we can isolate that business logic. And the same thing goes for when we get to the business logic. We don't want to care about raw queries and all that stuff. That's why we have the user DAO, so we can pull that down one level as well, so that the accessing of the data and the fetching of data is isolated to an, a separate layer. So that we, up here, can focus on the business logic. And in this case, the business logic is simple. We just want to get the user and return the username. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So. Lastly, we're going to have a look at the testing of all of this. So this is going to pull us all the way back to this thing I was doing here that may feel a little bit strange to you. Why would I create a function that takes some type of user module and then another function that creates a router and then actually instantiate my application? Well, I'm glad that you asked because this thing here is the whole reason why I do this. So I have a... Uh, layered application that at this is this is a top level this is the router level and at the router level i don't want to care about what's going on in my business level at my, in my service level that seems uninteresting to me because the thing i'm testing at this level is just that if i go and i say get slash users well then i expect the user service get all users function to be called. Now, if I wanted to do a full fledged integration test, I would just spin up the live application and then do a bunch of queries. The problem with that is that when I do that, it's for one part, it's fairly unperformant. It's going to take a lot of time to do this for a large application. And the second part is that it's not so value building for me to write a very large suite of those tests because the thing is, if I can trust that the user service get all users function is tested in some other place, then I don't really need to check if that thing is working in this test. Because in this test, I'm really only interested in that I get the right response code, and if there's an error, I should get an error, and like all of this stuff. I, this is me trying to test the network level or the like the application level, just so that the API is correct, so that I get a 404 if I hit the wrong thing, I get a 500 if some unexpected thing happens. That's just a This is just a communication I want to test. I don't want to test the business logic. And by creating this function that allows me to create an application with different types of modules, I can actually fake the implementation of my module. So I have this mock user module where I just, for convenience sake, instantiate a fake version with the same interface as the user DAO and the user service and it's just a bunch of just stub function or spies and then I export the mock module and this is very powerful because now I can start up the entire application like so and then I can use in this case I use super test where I can now just hit this application with different requests and then in t inside I still have all of these fake functions that I can just assert things on. So I don't have to start up MongoDB to do this. I don't have to, like it's gonna run all in memory and all of this good stuff. And I don't have to create a bunch of fake data and try to figure out how the get all users functions working. I can just make sure that it gets called. And then in another test, I can make sure that if that function, uh, that that function actually works the way it should work. So. This makes it very easy for me to just test the stuff that I'm, I care about at this level. And as you can see, it's not, a, it's not a fancy test. It's just make sure that you can get the user, make sure that you can create a user, and then finally make sure that you get a 500 if you try to do something that doesn't actually add up, such as in this case. Like something goes wrong with saving the user. Well, then I expect that the body should have an error and it should say fail. That's it. So this is now a route level test. 
and thanks to the layered application structure it becomes very easy and very performant for me to build this. Now let's look at the user service layer. So this is our business logic layer and once again we do the same sort of thing here. So in this scenario I just have a bunch of functions here that I instantiated that saving getting and getting all the users and then when I instantiate my user DAO like so I can just pass in my user DAO into my user service function and that we saw already like we all we already know that the user service is depending on the user DAO and the reason why we want to pass that in as well is because the user DAO itself if we passed in the live thing we would have needed to actually create a MongoDB instance and we would actually have to run it live against the database. And there's nothing wrong with that. What we call that is basically an integration test where you actually run the live thing. So there are two different philosophies to this. There's nothing wrong with just using the live database even at the business log logic level. It should be noted though that that is slightly more unperformant or it's, sli it's slightly less performant, let's call it that. So this is another approach where we simply mock off the database layer. So the DAO is just a stub, it's a mock version of its original self. And since we pass that in, we can do the same thing we did at the network level or at the application level, where we just call get user. And since in this test, it's a very simple thing, we know that the get user function is going to be called. And so we specify that, oh, this is going to mock return value once and it's going to be a it's going to be a promise with this user that we have created and then we simply check that we get what we expect so by doing this we once again have a layer, a layer that we're not interested in testing in this test because we're not in this test really we, we care about the business logic here we care about that it's possible to get a user and in this this test here we just care about the fact that we can get a username. We don't care about how the database connection works. We're, we're not interested in that part, so we just stub that off. Hopefully that makes sense, because it's just going to make our... It, 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 it's more laser focused. We can laser fo focus our test on one specific thing, and we do get a bit of a performance increase since we don't have to connect to the database. It is also very important, though, to know that if you want the most accurate tests without any possibility for you to make a mistake, because it's easy to make mistakes when you're using mocks too much and you might end up not testing the right things, then you should use the actual database connection and do it live. There are, as I said, philosophies on that. I'm not going to get into the discussion of like which ones you should use in what circumstances, because it's just simply too much of a discussion. And then we have the last type of test, which is the lowest level that we have, or rather the lowest level that we're going to test, which is our DAO layer, which is the th thing that just connects to the database. Now, in this instance, notice that here, I'm actually connecting to the database. I'm creating a test database, and this test is actually, it's just one test that just checks that I can save the user, because I'm lazy. And this test is actually going to hit MongoDB. This will fail if I don't have a Mongo instance running on my computer. Now the reason why I want to do this uh, live, actually to create the full integration test, is because when I'm testing the uh, implementation of my DAO, what I actually am testing is that my query is correct. And there's no really good, there's not really a good way for me to make sure that my query is correct if I don't actually hit the database. Because basically what I'm doing is that I'm sending a command to an external service such as the in database and then that service is going to do something and if my if they change the implementation let's say that I use a really old syntax and the database gets updated well then I'm not going to know if the if I actually have the correct uh, the correct query if I stub off the actual connection to the database so at some point, regardless of what testing strategy that you have, you want to make sure that you have at least one type of integration test. And this would be, I would call it the bare minimum. This is the minimum amount of integration testing you should, you should do in any application because you need to be sure that the connection to the database is working as you expect so that when you send in a query, you get the right thing back. 
So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're confused about ORMs and so forth, hopefully this has cleared it up a little bit. An ORM is just a abstraction on top of a um, of a connection to a database that has a bunch of extra functionality that takes care of all of this stuff of creating a user DAO yourself. This user DAO is for most intents and purposes you can think about it as the same thing as Mongoose. This is practically Mongoose does a lot more stuff than this but this is the basics of what Mongoose will give you. It's just a way for us to reduce down the amount of code we need to write in order to connect and query a database and query to a database. And if you're going to test this, I argue that you should apply this sort of pa pattern where you simply use a layered, so-called layered architecture. And a layered architecture usually contains the database layer, which is in this case the user DAO. If you're using Mongoose, it's going to be Mongoose, so you don't have to test it. And then there's going to be a business logic layer or a service layer, call it what you want, where all your business logic li lives. And then there's going to be a application level layer where this is where you actually get in all of the requests and you connect those requests to some service that does the actual logic that you want in your application and by structuring things in this way it becomes very easy for you to test you simply create tests that laser focuses on connecting to the api and then if you use this stubbing pattern that i like to use when i do this it becomes very easy to just isolate the test so that you only test the network stuff that's going on or the connection between the client and your server and then at your service layer, you can just focus on your business logic and then stop away of the actual database connection. So you don't have to have a live database or something like that running, which is also in some cases very nice. In some cases, it's not so nice. And then lastly, you want to have at least one level of integration test, which is the actual database level, where you make sure that your queries are correct. And you need to do this against a real live database, because otherwise you might mess it up. If you're using Mongoose, you don't really have to think about it so much. Have a great day.